In the previous lecture, we have seen matrix smelting and I have illustrated matrix smelting by solving two problems or rather three problems. Now, I thought that let me give you two more problems and discuss the solution of these problems so that you can understand the quantification of matrix smelting. Now, here is the next problem that is in continuation with my previous lecture that is the problem number fourth. The approximate analysis of copper concentrate is as follows. Cu 2 S, Fe S 2, SiO 2 and all are given. The concentrate is smelted in a furnace in presence of iron ore and limestone. Now, both are here used as a fluxing agent. The analysis of iron ore is given and that of limestone is also given. The grade of mate is 45 percent and the ratio of SiO 2 is to FeO is to CaO in slag is 45 is to 40 is to 15. The ratio is also given the slag is forming in this particular ratio of the different components of the oxides. The oil amounts to 12 percent of the charge and analyzes the composition is also given to you. Now, in say most of the matrix melting operations very often it is required to to use uh, extra source of energy and sometimes it requires it depends on the process it depends on the say analysis of the ore and sulfur content and so on so forth. So, it is quite possible that some of the matrix smelting operation they do require extra amount of fuel. So, here 12 percent of the charge that is the fuel which is used and composition is given air is 10 percent excess. Uh, you must have noticed, noticed by now in various lectures say on roasting or the smelting and so on. The chemical reactions accompanying the transformation of one phase to another in roasting as well as in smelting it does not occur with the stoichiometric amount of air. You always require some amount of excess air and uh, so what should I say at this particular point that the industrial operations they always require an excess amount of air. Now, it is up to the skill of the operator how beautifully you control the excess amount of air. Somebody may do at 10 percent, somebody may do 20 percent, somebody even do with 30 percent. So, all that is required to the control of excess air because the control of excess air is also important. The more air you use the more nitrogen will enter and more nitrogen will take the heat uh, from the reactor to the atmosphere. So, that is also an important issue over here. Now, you calculate per ton of concentrate, weight of each flux and uh, volume of air and so on. Now, the next problem is say copper ore contains 16 percent copper, 30 percent iron and so on. The smelting of this ore produces a mat whose grade is given, the flux is limestone and slag contains 14 percent CO. Now, various uh, data on the heat are given. Uh, you can go through these data and understand those data because whenever there is a formation of slag, it is also accompanied by heat of formation. I mean you do require to supply extra amount of heat for heat of formation. And here also given at what temperature they leave. So, you must have understood from the statement of the problem that I would like you to do heat balance also and that is what is written. You have to calculate calcium carbonate, total heat supplied and total heat leaving the furnace. So, these are the two problems. Now, the answers are for all the problems say in the previous lecture problem and this one they are given over here. So, I will proceed now to discuss the problem. I hope by now you must have read the problem and you must have understood how to solve these particular problems. So, let us discuss the solution of these problems. So, fourth, let us consider say x kg iron ore, x kg iron ore, y kg limestone, and z kg slag. 
Now, let us first of all do SiO2 balance because the components in the slag and their proportions are given. So, I will make use of this. So, now if I do SiO2 balance, so it SiO2 balance will lead me 0 0.19 x plus 0.07 y plus 260 that is equal to 0 0.45 z. That is how to take into account SiO2 from all sources. Now, let us do CO balance. Let me put this equation as number 1. To CO balance, then I get 0 0.52 y that is equal to 0 0.15 z that is equal to 0 0.15 z. Let us put this equation number 2. Now, in order to get because we have 3 variables, I need one more equation. So, I am looking for an iron balance. Now, before I do iron balance, I have to see the various uh, sources from where iron enters and it leaves. So, first of all, I have to find a grade of mat is given that is 0 0.45 that is equal to 160 upon 200 plus m f e s. So, if I solve, I get from here m f e s that is equal to 155.6 kg. Now, I know that that much amount of iron is going to the mat. Now, I can do the iron balance and find out the amount of iron that is entering into the slag. Now, I have to do iron balance. Now, I have to do iron balance. So, if I do iron balance, I write iron in concentrate, iron in concentrate I have to see iron from all sources plus iron in iron ore, iron in iron ore that is equal to iron in met, iron in met plus iron in slag. So, if I write down all the values from where the iron is entering and if you do that, then I will be getting an equation which is 0 0.57 x minus 0 0.31 z that is equal to minus 129.7. So, now I am summarizing all the three equation that is 0 0.19 x plus 0.07 y minus 0.45 z that is equal to minus 260. So, next is 0.52 y minus 0.15 z that is equal to 0 and 0.57 x minus 0 0.31 z that is equal to minus 129.7. So, this is equation 1, this is equation 2, this is equation 3, 3 variable, 3 equation one can solve. So, the value of x 133.6 kg, value of y 191.5 kg, and value of z that is equal to 664.0 kg. So, that is the answer about the what is asked. So, x is in fact iron ore. This is limestone and this is slag. Now, let us calculate about the volume of air. volume of air. First of all, we have to find out the amount of oil. So, oil, amount of oil is 12 percent of the charge. 
So, now the charge you note that charge consists of whatever you are charging to convert uh, the charge into met. So, you are charging concentrate iron ore plus limestone not only concentrate. So, it is 12 percent of all. So, the charge total is 100, 1325 kg. You have to add up all the amount. So, the oil amount of oil that is equal to 159 kg and accordingly the carbon that is equal to 135 kg and hydrogen that is equal to 24 kg as per the percentages are given. So, I am writing here 11.3 kg mole and hydrogen is 12 kg mole. So, once I know this thing, so I can calculate now theoretical oxygen theoretical O2 required for combustion required for combustion that will be equal to 17.3 kg mole right. So, we are considering now for complete combustion and that is an important nothing is given you, you can only calculate by considering complete combustion that is C plus O 2 C O 2 and H 2 plus half O 2 is equal to H 2 O. So, now you also require air to oxidize to oxidize say iron to F E O and sulfur to S O 2. So, we have to find out how much amount of oxygen would be required here. So, for that we have to do something. So, first of all we will do sulfur in mat because we have to find out how much amount of sulfur is going to the gases. So, sulfur in mat that is equal to 3.018 kg mole. You know sulfur in mat consists of Cu 2 S and F E S and you have to convert it and you have to get sulfur in mat. So, now sulfur in charge say sulfur in charge sulfur in charge that will be equal to 9.417 kg mole. You have to see the sulfur which is entering into the furnace from the different sources you do that and you will get this value. So, sulfur to gases sulfur oxidized to gases oxidized to gases you can very well guess now what will be that will be 9.417 minus 3.018 and uh, that will be equal to 6.399 kg mole. Now, immediately I can calculate the oxygen required O 2 required. I hope you must be remembering the reaction will be S plus S O S plus O 2 that is equal to S O 2 because the problem does not say uh, S O 3 or anything. So, you have to consider formation of S O 2. So, oxygen required that will be equal to 6.399 kg mole. Now, about the iron oxidized, iron oxidized, we can calculate the amount of F E O and from the F E O, we can calculate how much oxygen is required F E plus O 2 that is equal to half O 2 that is iron oxidized. You can calculate that will be equal to 664 into 0 0.4 upon 72 that is equal to 3.689 kg moles. So, oxygen required that will be half of it 1.844 kg mole. So, now also the problem says there is some oxygen is also available from charge you know you are charging if it O 3. So, uh, oxygen available oxygen available 
and available oxygen is only from Fe2O3. You know the amount of Fe2O3 because they calculated its amount and that oxygen will be 1.015 kg mole. Now, theoretical oxygen required that is theoretical oxygen required. Uh, let me put uh, derived from air, which is derived from air, because you have to subtract what Fe 2 3 is supplying. So, that will be whatever oxygen required for combustion plus oxidation minus oxygen available. oxidation Fe to FeO as we have calculated earlier and sulfur to SO2. So, if I do all then theoretical oxygen required would be 24.528 kg moles. Now, once I know the theoretical oxygen required then there is no problem 10 percent excess. So, actual oxygen will be 1.1 times this and I can calculate the amount of air. So, the amount of air actually required amount of air actually required that will be equal to 2877.95. So, that is the answer this is the meter cube. All that you have to divide uh, theoretical oxygen by 0 0.21 and uh, multiply by 22.4 and take 10 percent excess of that. So, you will get this amount of air. Now, the next is the gases which are forming, gases now which are forming. So, gases which are forming SO2, you have CO2, you have H2O, you have nitrogen. Now, mind you since we are using excess air, so there will be oxygen also in the flue gases. So, I will put here that is SO2 is 6.399, 11.30, H2O 6.00, nitrogen 101.448. Note the very large amount of nitrogen uh, that is uh, obtained in the flue gas because nitrogen is, is inert and whatever you supply it will go out with the uh, flue gas and not only this it will also carry a large amount of heat and oxygen is 2.4528. Now, these values are all in kg moles. So, I can write down the percentage. So, percent will be in percent 5.01, nitrogen note its amount is very, very high. Therefore, one has to be very cautious in using the excess amount of air because the it does not matter if you have a large amount of heat that is more than required then there is no problem, but whenever there is a heat deficit then this control of excess air is important one and second the nitrogen will also carry a large amount of heat. The quality of heat will be very high because the temperature of the flue gases is very high. At least the temperature will be that of the smelter 1000 or 1100 degrees Celsius. So, higher is the temperature higher is the quality of heat. So, when the quality of heat is very high then it takes a very large amount of heat with it and appropriate waste heat recovery devices must also be thought of uh, to recover the heat. So, that is what the important oxygen is 1.93 percent. So, the total of flue gas that is equal to 127.5998 that is in kg moles of course, this becomes 100 
it should become 100. So, the volume of the gases will be 2858.235 meter cube at 1 atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. Now, again you are noting here the ratio between volume of air and volume of gas is approximately 1 is to 1. So, that is all that is that also says that the solution to your problem is rather ok. Now, let us take it problem number 5. Problem number 5 says, say you are charging say you are charging I am putting in kg the charge is say copper is 160 kg iron 300 kg sulfur 320 kg and SiO2 that is equal to 220 kg say basis of calculation is 1000 kg concentrate based on that I converted this amount. So, you get here met and met contains Cu 2 S as per the statement of the problem and contains F E S, it contains slag that contains F E O, S I O 2 and calcium oxide. Then you have gases, you have S O 2 and N 2. Now, here you have to do heat balance also. So, as I have said that before you enter into the venture of heat balance or into the doing of heat balance, you must be very clear the about the material balance and all the values should be ok for heat balance because otherwise the mistake will be carried over till the end of the heat balance. So, be careful while doing the heat balance material balance first. So, it is given met grade is given. met grade is given that is 50 percent and it is also said that the slag it contains 14 percent CaO which is formed by the addition of limestone. Now, we have to calculate all their amounts. So, if I calculate now you know the definition of met grade that amount of copper upon amount of met. So, if I do that then I will be getting amount of Cu 2 S and amount of F E S. So, C U 2 S will be 200 kg and F E S will be 120 kg. This is how we know now the amount of met. Now, we have to calculate the amount of slag. Now, since 14 percent C O is in the slag. So, that means and we also know now here little bit chemistry of met is melting is also known to you. In this particular problem, the slag will contain FeO, SiO2, and CO, and that's all. There is no other source of uh, any other component in the slag except the three which I mentioned. What are they? FeO, CO, and SiO2. We are given 14% CO. So balance is FeO and SiO2. So that means the slag will have slag will have 86 percent FeO plus SiO2. Now, we know say SiO2 that is equal to 220 kg because whatever SiO2 in the charge it enters into the slag that is what the chemistry of matrix melting says and uh, FeO now you have to find out FeO in slag. So, F u in slag that will be equal to iron in ore minus iron in met that iron will go into slag. If I want to find out F u that will be into 72 upon 56. So, that will be equal to 287.5 kg is the amount of FeO that is entering into the slag. Now, let x kg 
is the weight of slag. Now, then x I can easily, fi easily find out that will be equal to 220 plus 287.5 divided by 0 0.86. So, I get now x that is equal to 590.1 kg that is the amount of slag. Now, the whole idea of knowing the amount of slag is to determine now SiO2, FeO and calcium oxide. So, now about the gases, so we have to know the amount of gases. Now, for the gases we have to do sulphur balance, we have to do sulphur balance. Now, what this sulphur balance says, say sulphur in charge. that is equal to sulphur in mat plus sulphur in gases that is what is sulphur balance. So, well uh, I am doing sulphur balance in kg moles uh, however, you can do in kg also as long as you are consistent with the units and with all there is no problem at all. So, Sulfur, I will write down the sulfur in charge that is 320 upon 32, sulfur in mat that is 200 upon 160 plus 120 upon 88 plus sulfur in gases. Now, by simple mathematics I can find out say sulfur in gases. that will be equal to 7.39 kg moles. So, therefore, SO2 would be SO2 would also be uh, equal to 7.39 kg moles because you know S plus O2 that is equal to SO2. Now, say O2 required for this, O2 required that will also be equal to 7.39 kg moles. Now, the weight of calcium carbonate, weight of calcium carbonate, since we know amount of slag, we know percentage calcium oxide from there we can find out the weight of calcium carbonate that will be 147.5 kg. Easily you can find out say calcium oxide is 14 percent, weight of slag is 590.1 kg. So, 14 percent of that 590.1 is the calcium oxide and from there uh, you convert to kg mole and find out the calcium carbonate and so on. So, that is how the weight of calcium carbonate. Now, weight, uh, weight of calcium carbonate is known to you. So, we know now moles of CO2 because calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate on dissociation it gives to you calcium oxide plus CO2 and this CO2 will be in the exit gases. So, moles of CO2 that will be equal to 1.475 kg moles. Now, slag contains FeO also. So, oxidation of iron will also require oxygen and that we have to find out. So, O2 for oxidation of iron that you can calculate it will come 1.996 kg mole. So, total oxygen required, total O2 required that will be equal to 9.386 kg mole 
that is you have to add one for sulfur to SO2 and iron to FeO, this is where you require the oxygen. So, accordingly nitrogen would be 35.29 kg moles. So, I can calculate now the amount of gases that will be say SO2 7.39 CO2 1.475 that is kg moles also kg moles and nitrogen that is equal to 35.29 kg moles. Now, with this we have done the so called material balance now we are ready to perform heat balance as the as asked in the problem now let us do the heat balance let us perform now the heat balance now remember in heat balance the basis of calculation is always 298 kelvin unless otherwise specified i mean 298 kelvin i mean because the heat content and cp values they are all given at 298 heat of formation of compound and so on they are all available at 298 Kelvin. So, it is customary or it is rather uh, it, is, it is desired that you choose the uh, reference of calculation is 298 Kelvin. However, you can choose any any temperature, but then you have to convert the available value into that temperature. So, that is what I thought I would tell you. So, heat balance what heat balance says I will again make a diagram. So, that I write down all the values over here what I have here. So, I have here copper ore and copper ore is charged at 298 Kelvin. Then we charge limestone that is also charged at 298 Kelvin. Then charge air, air is also charged at 298 Kelvin. Now, we have met, I mean met means M A double T E C U 2 S F E S. So, met we have C U 2 S that is equal to 200 kg, F E S that is equal to 120 kg and its temperature is 1400 Kelvin that is important. Then the slag amount we have to write down FeO, we have SiO2 and we have calcium oxide. So, FeO is 287.5, I mean they are all in kg, SiO2 220.0 kg and it is 82.6 kg and it is being discharge at 1400 Kelvin. Next, we take the gases, we have SO2, we have CO2, we have nitrogen. SO2 7.39, 1.475 and 35.29 and the gases are discharged at 500 Kelvin. So, this is what the material balance output I have written here, so that now I can do heat balance effectively. So, let me give other thermodynamic values as required for the calculation. It is also given heat content in MET, heat content of MET at its melting point and melting point is let us take 1273 Kelvin that is equal to 205 kilo calorie remember it is per kg not kg mole and a specific heat of liquid mat specific heat of liquid mat is 0014 kilo calorie 
per kg remember degree Celsius. So, that is also given. Now, some values on the heat content is also given. So, H 600 minus H 298 and 2 that is equal to 2126 H 600 minus H 298 oxygen 2210 that are given in kilo calorie per kg mole. Now, here onwards what value I am giving they are all in kilo calorie per kg mole. Now, H 500 minus H 298 for SO2 for N 2 and for CO 2. So, that is equal to 2108 nitrogen is 1418 and CO2 is 1987 values are in kilo calorie per kg mole. Similarly, the H 1400 minus H 298 SiO2 CaO and FeO. This is also you can write down here H 14400 minus H 298 and similarly you can put it here. So, this value is 17370. 13430 and 14520 that are again all in kilo calorie per kg mole. Now, it is also given heat of formation of slag, heat of formation of slag that is also given 140 kilo calorie per kg of slag. Now, some heat of formation values are also given say delta H not F u not means 298 delta H not F u that is minus 64300 that is kilo calorie per kg mole. Then delta H not F e s minus 23100 kilo calorie per kg mole delta H naught SO2 minus 70940 kilo calorie per kg mole then delta H naught calcium oxide that is equal to minus 151600 kilo calorie per kg mole then delta H naught CO2 that is equal to minus 94450 kilo calorie per kg mole and delta S naught calcium carbonate when it is formed from its element it is minus 289500 kilo calorie per kg mole. Now, I think all these data are given to you. Now, one can now find out the various terms concerning the heat input and heat output. Since the reactants are supplied at 298 Kelvin, so no sensible heat will be entering into the reactor because they are at 298 Kelvin. Now, the heat supply term first will be sulfur oxidation and second is iron oxidation. that will constitute the heat input term. So, sulfur oxidation you know that is 7.39 into 7940. Now, let me put here they are the heat liberated, heat liberated. Now, because I am not putting a minus sign that means I, I know that they are exothermic reaction that is why I put the term heat liberated. For iron oxidation to FeO that will be 3.993 into 64300. So, if you sum total then the heat liberated heat liberated 
that will be equal to 781 thousand kilo calorie. Now, why I use heat liberated? Because the decomposition of limestone is an endothermic reaction. So, heat of decomposition, heat of decomposition of calcium carbonate that is equal to 64088 kilocalorie. Mind you, this is a highly endothermic reaction and you see that that much amount of heat will be absorbed. Now, I had already given the thermochemical data in order to calculate the heat output. Now, using those thermochemical data which has been given to you in the problem, heat output by various outputs can be easily calculated. So, I will make now the calculation for you. So, heat input first of all, heat input that is consists of say oxidation reaction, oxidation reaction and the amount of heat input can be easily calculated by using the heat of uh, formation data and that is equal to 781,000 kilo calorie. Heat absorbed, that is equal to 64088 kilo calorie. So, therefore, heat available, heat available that would be we have to subtract it and that is heat absorbed. So, just for the convention I put this as a minus and this is exothermic reaction, so I will put it plus so that no confusion is there. So, heat available would be 716912 kilo calories. Now, we can write down the heat output, heat output. Now, heat output consists of several items for example, FeO, CaO, heat of formation and so on and so forth. So, I will write down the all the things for you per sensible heat in FeO, sensible heat in if you of course, I will put here in kilo calorie that is equal to 57979 seven nine kilo calorie. Sensible heat in CO, sensible heat in CO that is 19809. Heat of formation of slag, heat of formation of slag that is 82614 kilo calorie. Now, sensible heat in SiO2, sensible heat in SiO2 that is equal to 636963636690 now all these four it correspond to heat taken out by slag then sensible heat in mat sensible heat in mat that is equal to 71290 kilocalorie. Sensible heat in gases, sensible heat in gases, and you know the gases comprise of SO2, CO2, and nitrogen that is equal to 68850. 
then heat loss as said in the beginning. Now, if not mentioned, it is uh, in solving the problem, normally people take 10 percent of the heat available, if not given. If it is given, then you have to take the actual. So, heat loss, let us say 10 percent of available heat, of available heat. So, this makes 71691 kilo calorie. So, total heat output, total heat output that is 435623 and you see that heat input is much much greater than heat output. So, the process is autogenous in nature.